everyone. This is our first video in the short-term operating assets uh, cash and receivable series and in this short introduction video we're going to be talking about the contra revenue accounts as well as um, some issues in accounting and receivables. So let's just get started and recall that when you sell inventory there's two entries you have to record. The first entry is to record the sale, the revenue, and the either the account receivable if you sold it on account or cash if you sold it for cash. And the second entry you have to make is the recording of the expense or the cost of the sale. So the cost of goods sold is recorded as well as the reduction of the inventory. So again, you have your two entries when you make a sale. Typically, you're going you're gonna to credit your sales revenue account when you sell inventory. This is the amount that you have earned from selling that inventory. And you have to record the cost of what you sold. So you paid something for that inventory, or you paid some price to create that inventory, whatever, depending on what type of business you are. And this is called cost of goods sold. So again, this is the cost of the inventory that you sold to your customers. And usually, if you are a merchandiser or manufacturing company, this is going to be the largest expense that you have. So now let's turn our attention to contra sales accounts. And the first one we want to look at is sales returns and allowances. This is when a customer actually returns the goods to the seller, or the seller may grant a reduction in price to the customer. And we call this a contra revenue because it effectively reduces your net sales. So remember, you're not going to debit your sales revenue account when someone returns something. You always credit sales revenue. To reduce your sales effectively, we're actually going to debit something called sales returns and allowances. That's going to effectively reduce our total sales. In addition, we may sometimes give a customer a discount. Maybe they pay early which we want them to do. So we give them an incentive to, to send in their payment early, and that's called a sales discount. This is also a contra revenue account. So now that we have our sales revenue, and we have two contra revenue accounts, we can compute net sales. We do that by taking our sales revenue less the two contra accounts. So less sales returns and allowances and less our sales discounts account that gives us what's called net sales. Remember that word net simply means that something's been taken out. So net income, uh, taxes have been taken out. Uh, so net sales, something's been taken out. You see the word net, that means we have reduced sales with those contra revenue accounts. And then something else I wanna talk briefly about here is delivery expense. This is when the seller pays to get the product to the customer. We call this freight out in other words, but don't get that confused with freight in. Remember, freight in is not a delivery expense. Freight in is when the buyer pays to get the product to the buyer, to themselves, and that's actually included as part of the cost of the inventory. So please make sure you understand the difference in freight in and freight out. So now let's talk briefly about how um, these receivables that you've booked now because you've sold something actually appears on the balance sheet. So the balance sheet of course houses all the assets and receivables are our assets. So the balance sheet should report receivables at the amount the company expects to collect. So this is your net realizable value. So if you have um, sold something and you booked an account receivable, we probably don't expect to collect them all. There are going to be some times we're going to have customers that aren't going to pay us. And we have those doubtful accounts, we call them. So we're going to figure out in the next few videos where that, how to calculate that allowance for doubtful accounts. But on the balance sheet, it's going to be, it's going to be uh, presented as accounts receivable, less your allowance for doubtful accounts. That's going to give us our net account receivables. There's that word net again. So remember, that simply means something has been taken out. In this case, we have taken out what we don't expect to collect from our customers. And on the income statement, the flip side of that, the income statement should report the expense that's a, that is associated with the failure to collect. So if you don't expect to collect from some of your customers, then you also have to book that as an expense on the income statement to effectively reduce your um, taxable income. 
uh, and this is called a bad debt expense. You also may, may see it called an uncollectible account expense. Don't forget if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and questions and comments are always welcome.